How you do, Buckaroos, and how the heck are you? I'm trying to beer with. I've actually never had this particular beer before, believe it or not. Uh, Deschutes Pacific Wonderland, and the main reason I bought it, well, guess what? <laughs> it was on sale. It was only $7.99, a six-pack. It is a very warm, humid day here in the Ozark, so I figured, why the heck not? It's been raining, and it doesn't rain, and it gets humid, and it's so humid it rains again, and that's the kind of weather we've been having, baby. 5.5% uh, 40 IBUs, profile inspired by the Pacific Northwest, this unexpected dry hopped lager gets its light citrusy twist from Tetanang Mandarina hops. So there you go. Bottle conditioned for quality. Live yeast added to the bottle allows this beer to age gracefully. Stay longer. Keep bottles upright. Stay away from light and heat. Well, I did probably have this a little colder than it needed to be. I put it in a cooler with some ice. So I'm starting out rather cold, maybe a little colder than they want. The best by date is 8 3 of 17, so I'm well within that parameter, I think, and I'm okay. I was wondering why, they, you know, I always check when they have it on sale. Sometimes it's a date issue. Uh, I'm not as concerned about dates as a lot of serious beer snobs. Uh, I just don't think it matters. I mean, you're talking about, th there are a lot of IPAs these days that are designed to taste a specific way, and after a certain point, they don't taste that way anymore. But we seem to forget that the original purpose of the IPA was longevity, right? <laughs> I mean, the hops are a natural preservative. So your beer isn't going bad. Now, the flavor profile may change, change because that's what it was designed to do. That's what the original IPAs were designed to do. They were designed to change. But anyway, that being said, so actually, I didn't realize it was bottle conditions, so, but I poured it all out, and which is why I have this slightly hazy kind of lemonish color. And I'm getting some some citrus on the nose, some lemon zest specifically right away, I noticed. I might have to do another bottle and pour it a little more gently just to see if there's a difference. Ah, oh, but oh wow. But quite frankly, that's very nice. Darn bugs. <laughs> Brings out the bugs this humid weather it is. Uh I start talking like Yoda. Mmm, bugs you and weather brings out. <laughs> I was Yoda in a past life. That was long ago in a galaxy far, far away. You saw A New Hope, didn't you? Anyways, that was me, man, in a past life. I don't have the moves that Yoda has, but I still have the same wisdom. <laughs> I digress. And a slightly better complexion. Uh, <laughs> insert rim shot. Anyways, to shoot Pacific Wonderland. It's nice. It's very nice. I'm digressing, man. Mm. Uh, very clean. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, doesn't say what all they use. I'm kind of feeling some Pilsner malts in there. I'm, I'm hoping that's what they use because that's what I'm tasting. <laughs> nice full malt base. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of citrus there. And some peppery hop notes. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, the, the, the dominant, I, I was expecting to get, uh, uh, using the, the Tetanay Mandarina, it says I was expecting to get some some more orange-like notes, I suppose, uh, because of the word Mandarina. <laughs> I'm actually feeling more lemon than anything, but hey, that could be just my taste buds at this particular moment. The bottom line is that I, I really like this beer, especially for only $7.99. It has flavor, but it's not a, it's not necessarily a beer geek beer, right? It's not one that I really have to wax philosophic with my friends. So if I'm at an event, if I'm at a barbecue, uh, a picnic, whatever, you know, throw a lawn dart at each other, <laughs> uh, whatever. It's a beer that you, it, it's a good quality beer that you can sit and drink and not, you know, not have to, you know, do the whole pretentious beer thing.
That's what a beer like this is for. It's a damn tasty beer worth every bit of $7.99. I think the regular price is $8.99. It's actually worth $8.99. Will I buy this again? Yes. I don't know if I'll buy it again this season, although if that price comes up again, I will probably probably buy it again this summer, sure. It is a beer that I feel like I could bring to, you know, not necessarily a gateway beer, right? Now, I'm, I'm, I would bring this to only macro drinking folks, but... I could bring this to, you know, on the fence beer drinkers. And we all know those guys that kind of dabble. They drink mostly the macros, but they may dabble in craft or pseudo crafts uh, from time to time. You know, they'll go out and drink a Blue Moon on the town because that's their, you know, their, their good beer. You know what I'm talking about? This is a beer that I would bring to those folks because it's got a much more flavor than what they're used to. But it's not so far out of the box, it's going to overwhelm them. So there you go. Tip of my nose just keeps itching. I apologize. Anyways, hey, I'm trying to beer whisper. Part of it's because I'm outside. Part of it's my Tourette's. Part of it's yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot. Yeah, it's 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 a it's very humid out here. Plus, uh, allergies have just been brutal. I mean, I'm having to double up on allergy medicine. It's just been wicked. So, anyways, uh, hey, Deschutes. Uh, I've actually I, I really like Deschutes. They first came to my neck of the woods back in 2012. The first beer I had from them, I even forget where they're out of, Bend, Oregon. Uh, I knew that. <laughs> the first beer I had from them was their Mirror Pond IPA, and I actually really liked it a lot. And that kind of led me to try and some of their other stuff. So there you go. Hey, I am trying to beer whisper. Uh, beer evangelist, I mean, try to get my cursor in the right. So I can end it when I want to. <laughs> beer evangelist, prolific beer drinker, purveyor of wisdom. Ah, refreshing. <laughs> and all around, good guy. You have a good one. Well, how you do, Buckaroos? I was pouring another one. I started trying to do a video, and I had some technical difficulties. So, anyway, bottom line, <laughs> I decided to pour another one of these. Uh, the suit-specific one that I had. Because I didn't realize when I poured the first one that it was a bottle-conditioned beer. So I thought I'd pour it a little more gingerly, leave a little bit at the bottom, uh, to see if there was a, a noticeable difference. Uh, it is just a tad clear, but it's still kind of a hazy lemonish. Uh, the aromas and the flavors are the same. It is maybe a tad cleaner in the finish without me dropping a whole bottle in there. But actually, there are some flavors there at the end I noticed by putting in the yeast that I'm not getting right now. So there you go. There, There is some differences. I did forget. I, re I did remember a story, though. You know, that's what you're thinking. Dang, Tom, I'm glad you found a way to make this video run long. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I was, I, I told you that I, the first, uh, the shoots that I had was their Mirror Pond Pale Ale, but I didn't say, uh, I, I didn't say where I had it or when it was. It was actually in 2012 uh, when Seamus was diagnosed with cancer, um, leukemia specifically. Uh, it was at, uh, uh, so here's the situation. He was getting really tired of, of eating hospital food, right? It's in the central West End of St. Louis. There's a few places I can walk to. The most ones probably by the time I, you know, navigate the hospital and walk around, they're probably a quarter mile away. The closest place is Tom's uh, Bar and Grill, I believe it's called. That uh, we hadn't ate this the first time we'd ate there, uh, and uh, but we were told they had good burger. Turns out they did, and we ate there several times since then. But uh, <laughs> but Seamus wanted anything but hospital food. Are you following me? So I went down to Tom's and I ordered us something to eat, and they had the Mirror Pond Pale Ale, and they had it uh, not on a tap but in 22 ounce bottles. And it was about eight bucks a bottle. Again, I'm talking about 22 ounces, so I went ahead and said okie dokie because I was I hadn't had it before, I wanted something different, and I thought, why not? Uh, 
Well, I was waiting on the food anyways, uh, and that, that was my first experience with Tom's and Deschamps. <laughs> there are several places uh, in Central West End that shame this like to eat. So anyways, I'm glad I could tell that story without Brian. And anyways, back to the beer. Hey, when I can't, I don't know why I do that, man. Sometimes, uh, it's, uh, some, I think it's habit, some of it's Tourette's, and I keep saying anyways over and over again. I should say anyway, not anyways, but somehow any for some reason anyways keeps popping out, man. Keep trying to stop it, but it comes out anyway. <laughs> See what I did to that last one on purpose, just for a bit. Anyways, uh, then that one was an accident. Anyway, so uh, wow, uh, this huge specific wonderland. Actually, the the more I drink this beer, the more I enjoy it. The, the flavors are simple. But they're they're very nice. Again, I just get frustrated with folks that don't understand beers like these. You've got that, those pretentious beer snob poser drinkers, I like to call them. That anything doesn't doesn't have a hundred flavors or just whack your palate out of joints of mediocre beer. No, a beer done right within its style is never mediocre. Just because you don't have the palate to understand it doesn't make it a mediocre beer. It's a damn fine beer. Simple beer, done right, in my opinion. This is, uh, and it was only seven ninety nine. So, in my opinion, for what it's worth, man, <laughs> I will buy this again at some point. So, well, I am done beer whisperer, <laughs> prolific beer drinker, beer evangelist, purveyor of wisdom, and all around good guy. Fresh.